guys hello it's mommy of two wife of one coming back at you for another week yay yay um actually this is the first week that the video is going to complement the written blog as opposed to the written blog coming after the video so i actually started writing the written blog last week i was watching a reality show i tend to watch those from time to time and in the reality show i won't say the name of it but it's a husband and wife. They don't have, you know, any issues. They love each other and all of that stuff. But he was having some problems, some money problems. And it was a matter of, you know, he owed some people a lot of money. And money wasn't really coming in to pay what he owed. And instead of him going to his wife and telling her the issue, he kind of acted like everything was okay. And because of that, he's trying to make, you know, basically trying to find a way to get this money in a legal way of course but he's like you know making side deals and he's talking to all these different people and because he's not telling her these things he's coming off as being really shady and it's not that she suspected that he was cheating on her or anything like that but she definitely knew something was going on she's like my husband doesn't act like this i'm not sure what's going on he needs to tell me what's happening and because he was keeping so much stuff from her and all of these issues he had were just kind of weighing really heavily on his shoulders he started experiencing physical pain because when you are stressed and worried, it's not just about you internally having these issues. You know, that stuff really manifests itself physically when you're having headaches or your eyes are getting dizzy or, you know, with him, it's like pain in his like lower body. And it got to the point where it was so bad that he actually had to go to the hospital for it. And hopefully, you know, the new episode comes out this week, so hopefully he'll, he tells his wife everything. But it reminded me how I had this conversation with my husband before he and I got married. Because when he and I were dating, whenever he had any kind of issue, no matter how big or small, he wouldn't tell me about the issue until he had already figured out how to solve it and then went about actually solving it. So then he would come and tell me, like, oh, man, I had this problem last week and blah, 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 blah. And I would listen and be like, okay, you solved it. That's great. But I talked to him right before we got married. When we get married your problems are now my problems and vice versa whatever affects you is affecting me because now we're married we're one we're supposed to work in these things together and I'm not saying he didn't understand and not saying he didn't agree but it's hard and i can attest to this men it's hard to get out of that mindset of doing everything on your own if as a man you lived all these years handling all of your problems without helping anybody without confiding in other people then I can imagine it not being very easy to get into this new mindset, this married mindset of going to your wife first when a problem arises. So I completely understand that it may take some time, but what I'm asking you guys to do is to understand that this is a necessity for us because keeping stuff from us is going to make us even more worried. And again, you know, you made that promise to us, you know, for better, for worse, which you're poor, blah, 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 blah. All of those vows are vows that we both say to each other and the point of those vows is not just so it sounds pretty to say it in front of other people but the point is that no matter what goes down in our relationship or what goes down with you and your job or me and my family or whatever I got your back you got my back we're gonna figure this out together that's the whole point of saying those vows and standing up in front of all these people and claiming you're gonna be with this person through the good and the bad and it doesn't mean that when the bad happens you take care of you by yourself you're not a single person anymore and now you're married Again, we are one. I am your partner. I'm supposed to be your best friend. Confide in me. Because even if you come up with all these solutions in your head to solve this problem, I may have some solutions that you haven't previously thought about. And how are you going to, you know, benefit from my knowledge if you're not talking to me about things? And also as women, this is the message for the women now, if you really want your man to confide in you and to treat you like a partner, you have to make yourself open to listening to what he has to say. If you are one of those people that when you're stressed, you start like really rambling on and you're getting really fidgety and oh my gosh, what do you want to do and this is a disaster and blah, blah, blah. If you have that kind of attitude or if you have that kind of reaction to every little thing that goes wrong, your man is not going to feel comfortable talking to you because he's not going to want to deal with that. He's going to be like, oh my gosh, she's going to be dramatic and this is just going to you know boil over and it's going to be bigger than I thought it was and I just don't want to deal with that. Then he's not going to come to you at all. So I can't tell you, obviously, how to respond to an issue because it depends on what you know, the issue is. But you need to make yourself, you need to put yourself in a position where he's comfortable enough to confide in you. And also, when your man comes to you and he says, okay, babe, we got a problem, that's not the time for the blame game. 
It's not about pointing fingers at him or whoever saying, I told you you shouldn't trust that person. And why did you do this? Da, da, da. That's not the time or place for that. The focus now is, okay, baby, this is our problem. Here are some solutions. How are we going to work this out together? Come to a decision together on how to solve this problem. Take the time to talk to each other. Listen to him. Again, that's not about placing blame. That is not the time or the place for that. Listen to what he has to say. Keep your mind open at all times and work with him to come up with a solution. And then stop trying to handle everything by yourself. That's not your job anymore. It is your job to love your family. It is your job to love and honor your wife. It is your job to be, I guess in your head, you know, be the provider and the protector and all that stuff. And that's great. But just because you're the provider and protector doesn't mean you're the only person who can, who can provide and the only person who can protect. Together, you and your wife can provide for the family. Together, you and your wife can protect the family. So the sooner you have that mindset, the less stressed you'll be and the less pain you'll bring to yourself and to your marriage. So that's my message for this week. I hope you guys really take heed and that you take the time again to listen to each other and to confide in each other. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions for topic ideas, please send me an email at mommy of two wife of one at gmail.com. That's mom of the number two wife of O-N-E at gmail.com. And I will see you all next week.